welcome back to the Patch Pod. Um, how how have you guys been doing? Good. 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 Did you guys have a good week? Yeah, I, have a, I had a good break. Has um, has has everywhere been warming up a bit? Oh yeah, it's getting warmer <laughs> here in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. I know this episode is going out in May, um, May second, but obviously we're recording a little bit earlier. So if it sounds like that, you know, like uh, that we're still in the in, at the end of the winter, um, that's probably why. Um, but so today we're going to go um, just straight in and then uh, talk about destination wedding stuff. I don't know if it has always been that way, but just compared to five years ago, I think when I when I was first starting out, I feel like there are definitely a lot more people who wish to do destination weddings and who are more interested in doing destination weddings and there are actually more people doing destination weddings um, i think even the clients i think there are more couples who are doing destination weddings and then for something like um, pauline and um, john tries to you know um, john tries to do more of is uh, adventure adventure elopement i feel like that's definitely took off a lot and during during COVID time you know where there mm -hmm. was a lot of limitation in terms of the number of guests can attend mm. and, and, and whatnot. So I think a lot of couples chose to go out to the, to the nature and um, to the wild and, you know, it'll open, it'll open something, you know, somewhere a little bit more special to them. So I think that's probably what been triggering more people to um, opt for like destination weddings and stuff. So, for those photographers who are who are wanting to get into destination weddings but haven't been able to yet, or if they have a destination wedding coming up, you don't you're still looking for a way to you know prepare the destination weddings well. We thought we'll probably talk about we'll talk about the destination weddings in this episode, but I think you know we'll talk about all the destination stuff. So like I do a lot of destination engagement sessions and destination honeymoon sessions and then destination weddings i've done um i've done a few a couple uh this year uh, let's start with asking you guys do you guys prefer a destination wedding or do you guys prefer a wedding at your home city <laughs> i mean it depends right like if it's locally less planning less stress yep <laughs> um but obviously i feel like most people would want to experience like having a destination wedding just because they get to travel they get to i mean hopefully they travel yeah. somewhere they haven't been before mm. and most often like they get to explore that place as well for me it's like a two-part um uh, thing i guess so um, uh, if I was still single, I would probably enjoy destination <laughs> weddings more. What do you mean if? <laughs> huh? If. Okay. Because <laughs> it's it's hard. Now that I have a family, I feel like now I'm realizing that it's, you know, it's easier to stay at home in Vegas. Um, I still want to do like elopement style shoots, like closer Death Valley or like somewhere close that I can just go home afterwards um, because of, you know, it's hard to stay away from my two-year-old with my wife. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the adventurous side of me, once in a while, I still want to do, like, you know, adventure adventure weddings, probably. Mm. I think I'm a half and half. Like, I feel like if I stay stay local a little bit too long, then I get a little bit bored, mm -hmm. then I want to go away. Mm -hmm. But I think I feel like these past couple of months, for me, like, I've been on the road quite a while. It's been weird. Like I've been getting like no sessions from Las Vegas, <laughs> um, not by my choice, but I've just been getting like no inquiries from Vegas, but I've been getting a lot of inquiries from elsewhere, like in California. So I've been traveling quite a lot. So at this moment in time, I'm like, I'm wishing that I get a few more <laughs> Vegas weddings. But um, I think I, for me, I think the whole reason I started photography is because I wanted to travel. Yeah. For me, if I have, like you said, Pauline, I think it depends on the location, but like, if it's somewhere that I haven't been to, or if it's a place that that's on my bucket list, then that's definitely, I think I will, I will definitely choose over local weddings. For your clients who are, you know, for those sessions, are they traveling as well or are they local to that area? Mostly they're traveling as well. Yeah. Interesting. Why? <laughs> no, I, I mean, it kind of goes against what we're talking about, but I feel like if I'm traveling somewhere, I would probably find a local photographer versus perhaps someone that I really like that will travel with me 
to hmm. that place. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think if the location was really far away, then I think that makes sense. But I think I yeah, think California is I think somewhat still close. It's, it's still considered close enough that it's, it's it can yeah. be a day trip if it's <laughs> yeah you know depending on where. So I think when people are searching like sort of like West Coast uh, photographer mm-hmm. in general, that I think I. I still pop up on their on on Instagram tags and all that. So I think sometimes they don't. Some some of the photographers, some of the clients don't even know that I'm not I'm not based in San Francisco when they're doing a San Francisco mm. shoot. Uh, yeah. So things like that. So I think I think it's never intentionally they they try to hire me from Vegas, but um, mm. but yeah. When you get an inquiry um, and you've never been to that region or that city or uh, that particular venue, do you often time because it's still a destination wedding, do you still just take it or do you kind of have to do some research on that venue or that region to decide whether if it's, you know, like if you want to take it or, you know, like if you don't want to take it kind of thing? I feel like it's the same for me if it's local as well. I do the research no matter what. Even if it's maybe I've been to that location before, I I always want to like redo the research and kind of get to know the clients and get to know, you know, their plan as well. So I definitely look into it for sure. Do you, do you feel like, do you choose a certain type of wedding over the others? Is it more of a style thing or do you think it's a, like what, what would be the decision factor in terms of like researching and, and all that? Recently, there was one inquiry and I've shot there before. And honestly, I hated the venue because (laughs) the ceilings were really low and it was completely backlit because there was just windows on the other side and very dark on their faces from where I'm shooting from. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, it's the the worst. And so I did really try as hard to win them over and, you know, get them as clients. So I guess that just kind of makes me less motivated. Mm. Um, Whereas if it is like a place that I've always wanted to shoot or I really like shooting there, then maybe I would, I know it's terrible to say, but (laughs) and also like, I think at that point with the clients, they were just, they weren't completely sure about things and they weren't really prioritizing the couple portraits as much. They just wanted, Mm. you know, as minimal coverage as possible. And so in that sense also, like I just wasn't aligning with them. And so I think every factor comes into play, but Definitely, yeah, I do consider the venue and, you know, the location. Do you ever say no to your clients? If I'm booked already, but it well, depends. Yeah. It depends. Okay. How about you, John? I, I would definitely consider, like, the, the place. If it's, like, something that I uh, I want to showcase in my portfolio. Because right now, it's also depends on the stage of where I'm at right now, mm-hmm. which is that. So if, because I want, like, adventure weddings mostly, so... If 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 it's gonna show that in my portfolio, then then yes, I would I would um, most yeah. likely would say yes. So yeah, I would research the venue, mm. um, and then of course check if I'm available for that date. Yeah, yeah, that's um, I think that's what I do as well. I think um, like if it's the type of wedding that I want to shoot, then I definitely then uh, you know like I mean for me to know that I have to do so, do the research first. So there was one wedding that um. It was uh, the the only wedding that I did in Chicago. I really took that first because it was a destination wedding because I've never shot a wedding in in Chicago, so I wanted to go. But the venue they booked uh, was like was amazing venue. Like it's, um, I mean, I've never seen that venue before their their, their inquiry. But after seeing the venue, I was like, oh, I have to do this kind of thing. <laughs> and then, and then like three months before the wedding, the the, the the venue shut down, so they changed the venue. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it was still, I mean, it was still good, good experience. Like it wasn't, it wasn't the venue that I was like hoping for. That would be like I thought that would be amazing. Like it was on the rooftop of like eighty three story um, building, um, so it would have been really cool. Yeah, didn't happen. So <laughs> doesn't always how uh, it doesn't always plan out mm-hmm. is. As uh, as I do, as we do the research and everything, so um, diving I guess straight into like deeper into destination wedding stuff, we sort of like a categorized into the the travel side of things versus the photography side of things. If there's anything different, and then we sort of like categorize the international um, side of things a little bit um, separately, so that because there's a little bit more things to consider when you do international destination weddings and 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 so on. So. 
Is there any travel sites that you use for, I don't know, flights for domestic? Um, I know Canada is a little bit different, probably. Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's only so many options. <laughs> I usually just use Skyscanner. Okay. Because it, it um, shows me all of the airlines. But now that I've discovered Southwest, how awesome <laughs> they are, <laughs> um, I mostly just look at Southwest. <laughs> yeah. For domestic flights. I think, well, stay, staying within U.S., I guess, first. Um, yeah. For me, yeah, Southwest is my go-to as well. Um, but I use, um, just to rack up some points and stuff, I use Chase um, Travel Portal um, that I can just book through mm. there. But to compare the flights, um, like in terms of pricing, I think I've used case, Skyscan a few times as well, which is also really good. But I've, I've used the Google Flights as well. Um, that kind of tells what's the average um, sort of pricing for that from the departing port and arriving port. Um, so I can make the sort of like right decision whether if it's too expensive or if it's too too cheap and all that kind of stuff onto Canada. Well, for example, for the Hawaii trip, I just yeah. searched on Google and because they do have like averages and, you know, you can see the trends. But I mean, I think maybe we'll talk about it soon, but I – Especially now, especially if we're traveling with camera gear and stuff, I try not to have any connection if I don't have to. I just do like straight, direct flights to, you know, limit the chances of anything going wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I obviously I want to fly as cheap as possible, but at the same time, I'd rather be safe with that than. Anything. So how do you um, allot like a um, like a buffer, like go to the destination one day before the wedding, two days before the wedding? Like if you're going to have like a flight, do you want to go one day in advance? I think like average would be two just because in case your flight is delayed, yeah. you want to still be there ahead of time and not yeah. maybe like just on time. If that makes right, sense. Right, yeah. Especially if you want to be able to scout a little bit or mm -hmm. at least kind of settle you know, your mind before a full day of wedding, then right. I'd probably recommend that. And that's probably what I would do too. Yeah. Um, I do that too. Um, two days, um, two days, well, I should say two nights before. Um, so I'll try to probably arrive just before the day I arrive. I won't do anything. Mm. Just go to bed. And then the next morning I'll probably scout around a little bit. And then usually um, in the evening, if they're doing any kind of rehearsal dinner and that kind of stuff, then I would attend those. So do you like, do you factor that into your packages? Like, because you know that you're going to stay there for two extra nights. Mm -hmm. And also if they don't do rehearsal wedding, uh, rehearsal dinner and that kind of stuff, then I try to find another couple to do engagement sessions. Mm. Mm. Good. How about, how about in terms of hotels and um, like, uh, do you always like rent a car or does it depend on the city? Well, it depend. <laughs> I would I think, assume like it's probably the easiest way to, you know, obviously yeah. Yeah. Working, yeah. to travel around, but um, unless always... if you're like in a big city then and, and say the wedding's like downtown, then probably you'd just want to stay down in the city. Right. Yeah. So in that yeah. case you wouldn't necessarily need to rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That way, that way you can drink as well if you if you want to. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> No, but I think um, I do. I do prefer renting a car, but I think uh, more and more these days, I feel like it's been becoming unsafe. Mm. <laughs> With uh, a lot of the cities, I don't know about um, yeah. in Canada, but um, in the U.S., at least on the California side, there been, there's been so many break-ins. Um, so mm. it's kind of scary to leave anything in the car. So might as well. I mean, the car is becoming a liability as well. So might as yeah. well just have this, have, you know, pack lights and just have one bag just with me all the time and just take Uber or, you know, do that. It would just be easier. Don't have to worry about too many things. Yeah, th that makes sense. Uh, especially in like San Francisco, because mm. I, I know you do a lot of, um, you, you do engagements there or like mostly yeah. engagements, right? Yeah, engagement sessions, weddings and yeah, honeymoons. And recently there's a lot of like... <laughs> muggings and mm. all that it's yeah. scary all right let's talk about the how how do you pack your bags like in terms of do you carry oh i mean obviously this will depend on which cities that you go to um, or how long you go to but 
in general, like if you're going two days before the wedding, and then let's say you're coming back the day after, do you usually have like a carry-on bag and a check-in bag, or do you just try to just have everything as a carry-on, or how does that work? Mm, depends on how long the trip is. Um, I'd probably have one um, check bag, mm-hmm. and then all of my all of my camera gear will be with me as a carry-on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten away with having not my actual camera bag, but like a little bit smaller and a carry on like rolly luggage. Mm-hmm. And I got away with that. <laughs> I don't know how, maybe that still works. But right. in that case, I didn't have to pay for a checked bag. But typically, I guess, for example, the one coming up, I would have a checked bag as well, just because I'd probably bring my bigger camera bag, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of, I would say, um, in terms of um, some of the travel tip goes, always have all the gears as I think everyone knows that, but I think, you know, just have everything as a carry on. You don't want to check in your bag and realize that that bag hasn't arrived until your wedding day, until the wedding day. And right. that's, that's yeah. too scary. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's way too scary. So, but at the same time, what oftentimes uh, a lot of photographers do forget is that a lot of these carry-on bags have weight limit. Um, oftentimes, airlines don't check the weight of the carry-on um, carry-on bags, but when they do, if they do, it's almost guaranteed your bags is not going to be <laughs> under that weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our bags are way too heavy for that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, with all the gear. So yeah, if you are someone who who are who who is a little bit more worried in those sense, then I would say just pack really light in terms of essentials in the carry on bag to lower the weight, and then have those maybe if you have like five six different lenses, maybe have only one or two lenses in the carry on bag and the rest of them in the in the check in bags. And then maybe if you have like three flashes, just have like one flash and then have two flashes in the, in the checking bags. That way you can kind of, kind of manage the weight because the worst case would be if they just cancel you. They can, they can cancel your flight. <laughs> like if you refuse to check in your bag. And I think I will definitely refuse to check in. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an engineer or anything, but what is the difference between having it? like carried on the weight versus the check. <laughs> I, I know, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the same. It's going to be on the same, same flight anyway. So yeah. I don't know. Usually, usually they're more strict with the size, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pers- personal, yeah. 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 As, as, as long as it can fit on the, the overhead bin, then, you know, like they'll, they'll, they'll mm-hmm. be okay. And then another, another kind of a, um, like sort of pro tip is that most of the flights allow up to two bags as a carry on. Like one is a personal item and one is a bag. So yeah. if you can have a personal item, like maybe a, for ladies have a little bit bigger handbag that you can actually put your laptop in, um, that, that will reduce the weight of the, the carry-on bag a lot. So maybe mm-hmm. it, just like you said, that's exactly the same amount of weight, but you're just distributing into two different bags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, that can, that can work much better as well. So if you're someone who is a little bit more, more worried and, in those sense, those are the, some of the tips that you can use. Um, another another thing that we have to watch out for is that the um, about on the battery side of things, all, all the photographers have, we always have ton of batteries <laughs> from the, all the camera batteries, flash batteries, just because AA batteries, I don't know, like all, all different ga- kind of batteries. Sort of like the rule of the airlines in general is that you cannot have any of the batteries inside the check-in bags. You have to have all the batteries inside your carry-on bags. Don't ask me why. So if you already have a battery inside the device, so like let's say if you already have a battery inside your camera, then let's say you should be able to, t- you should tape the on-off button so that it doesn't toggle on. This is going a little bit overboard uh, because technically you are allowed to take your camera out and take photos inside the, inside the planes. <laughs> so yeah. it's not it's not like you're not allowed to have it on. But um, yeah, apparently those um, signals can definitely disturb um, the airlines and stuff. Um, I, I doubt it will it will do much. But yeah, but that's the sort of like the sort of like the recommendation the airlines give out. And then any of the, of the any of the spare batteries, just put it in like the ziplock and then just 
just um, put them together. Um, if you can tape it over any of the contacts, that's always they they always op- appreciate that. Have you guys have any issues before with your carry on, like with your camera gear? Yes. So far for, with me, not really. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Like I, so I'm surprised that my camera bag um, passes as a personal carry. So, really? Yeah. Really? How big is it? Um. Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, isn't it, it fits isn't the, it is a carry on? No, it's not a carry on. It's, it's a personal. Because yeah, I, it, I tried putting it un- underneath the underneath for, the, for, the seat. And yeah. it fits, so it was oh. like, okay, I guess it's a personal. Yeah. My, mine doesn't mm-hmm. fit. There's oh, no so way so it's, mine it's fits. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's what happened with me in the past. I just had like my Herschel backpack, and I had my camera. Well, at that time, I only had one camera body, and then I had a separate lens. But mm-hmm. it, yeah, fit under the seat. But no, I was asking because um, usually when you're going through security, I've had most. I think most every time they've checked. They've had to hand check it because they're like, what is mm. this in the bag? <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, let's just do hand check. Like, what's the point in yeah. going through? But another thing um, that we can bring up is if you have any film um, cameras or film, you should not get it through the scanner. <laughs> mm. oh. So keep that in mind. Yep. So you have to, uh, you have to um, check it in. Or you can just ask for them to hand like, yeah. check it. Because it will, uh, will ruin the film. I didn't even, I didn't even think of that. Well, yeah. I don't shoot film, but <laughs> you want to? I do. <laughs> it's so expensive now. I know it is. For me, I've gone through. Uh, there was a situation where anyone who doesn't know Rotolite, uh, Rotolite is an LED light that's uh, that's round and that doesn't yes. really look like a light in some <laughs> way. Um, that, apparently yeah. that was caught in the in the scanner uh, when they put mm. through the security, and then um, they're literally asking, "What is this?" I'm like, "It's just a, it's just the light." Did you, yeah. did you turn it on and turn it off? Yep. Show them. <laughs> That's funny. But there are there has been a few situation with batteries apparently that you know like when it was going through the scanner that um, they detected something, and then mm. um, and one time there was a battery like. I, I have a battery case of double A's, um, so mm. I put everything in, so that I, I don't have to put tape over the contact. But um, because there was, it was standing, and then on the security monitor, it just looked like one battery, but it, it was giving out a lot more uh, signals than than what it should have been. So yeah. they were trying to figure out what it was, but it was mm-hmm. just standing, so it was like six batteries in one line. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of those situations because technically. Any any electric device that's bigger than your phone, they should you should take it out from your bag. But apparently, yeah. camera you don't need to. So it's, mm-hmm. it can be very confusing. But always just follow the guidelines of the the TSA of of the ports that you're going through. Yeah, it's always different from airport to airport. Yeah, I've gone through where like in the morning I'm, I'm go, I go I go past Vegas airport like without any trouble. On the way back, I get checked like three times. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's exactly the same content yeah. in the bag. So so yeah, it's always different. But um, um, prepare for all different kinds of scenario, and let me know if there's any any fun, if there's any uh, funny ones. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to the actual the photography side of things uh, in terms of like how you guys are planning and how um, how we're doing the destination weddings and how we treat them def- differently um, than the local weddings. I guess, Pauline, do you want to start? Like, how do you start planning the destination wedding session? If you're going out of state or out of the country, you're going to have to look into all the paperwork that you would need. So, for example, if you need, you know, a working visa, um, all the permits, if you're going to specific parks, just in general where you're shooting, making sure, you know, everything's in order. Especially if you're coming to Canada, say for you guys, even for me, if we're going to say Banff, it's really important to even like contact them directly and ask, just tell them why you're, why you're going to be there, mm-hmm. what you're going to do, just to make sure you have all the information and make sure, you know, you screenshot their response as well in case, um, once you are there. So all the paperwork is really important to have. Canada you. is actually, Canada is actually really easy, uh, for people, for a photographer going from the U S. It's mm. just, we're just not allowed. So <laughs> 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 if we contact, because like, because like my, my sort of for the international uh, destination wedding. So like the first thing that I do is contact the, that embassy um, in the U S or 
um, mm. and then um, ask them like if like if I'm traveling to Canada, for example, on a yeah. photo shoot of of American couple in Canada, is that allowed? And it's it's always straight up, no. <laughs> Only Canada, Canadian photographers are allowed. Mm. Yeah. So there are some countries if if the couple is not from that country and if the couple clients are paying in not in that currency, then they're yeah. usually okay regardless of even if we're shooting in that that city or that country. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things to think about, like instances like that, like just like what Eugene yeah. mentioned. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think we mentioned before, like maybe a few episodes ago about how people do this because it's not as easy as you think. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. People won't get into wedding photography and think, oh, I want to just travel and do destination, but it's mm -hmm. a lot yeah. more to it um, yeah. than you think. Mm -hmm. and it's not so easy sometimes to get, you know, all the permits and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, we're going to do the international a little bit separately, but uh, well, I mean, we're already, we're already there, so we might as well. So some of the things that I usually, so I have a checklist that I go through after the getting the paperwork done. Obviously, check your passport that you have at least six months of um, the expiration date on. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, uh, you can you can get denied to <laughs> for the for the entry. If you're thinking of renting a car, get an international driver license. It should be super easy. You need that to drive in other countries. <laughs> Change the currency ahead of time. If you order it online, they're usually a little bit cheaper. If you're changing the currency at the airport, that's the most expensive way to do it. So mm -hmm. if you have any credit card that you can use uh, internationally without any international transaction fees, um, that those are always pretty handy as well. And then those will rack up some points as well if, you, if that's tied into the credit card. And then um, get an insurance uh, for that travel and for that job, whether that's a liability insurance. It depends on the where you're going and uh, what kind of venue you're shooting. And then um, sort out the sort of like your phone service. See if your phone can be used in that country without doing anything, which mine is. I use T-Mobile and they cover a lot of countries there. They cover with, um, you know, 5G network up to, up to 5 gigabytes. And then after that, it's like 4G. So I don't really need to do anything. Phone conversation, I think, I don't know how much that's covered. If I have the internet, then I'm, I'm just using the Wi-Fi calling anyway. So I'm mm -hmm. okay with that. Lastly, one of the probably the most important thing is um, learn a few words in their language. You can get a lot of help from a lot of people quite, very quickly. Yeah. Locals. <laughs> yeah. Anything that you guys want to add to that? No, you pretty much covered a lot of it. Okay. This might be an unpopular opinion, but would you like hire a sh second shoot a local second shooter to help out? To yeah. me, um, I feel like I, I would want to just yeah. to like get their expertise. It's like the, not, not only that, like the part of me feels bad about it, like kind of stealing a job from yeah. from them, like they're supposed to have that job. Um, at least that way, I'm giving back um, mm -hmm. some of it, like sharing the, the profit. Yeah, I still have to work for it, but, you know, and also it's just an asset for you. Like, locals would probably have better knowledge when it comes to things. Um, yeah, that's just my thought. I think I think I would like to, but I think it always comes down to if any listeners who haven't listened to the second shooting episode, <laughs> uh, please do so, because that covers a lot in terms of, like, so I think it comes down to, you know, like, you know, hiring a quality second shooter, you know, you cannot be hiring yeah. anyone. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the big hurdle. But at the same time, it's much cheaper way to do it. Because if mm -hmm. you bring a second shooter from, like if I bring John to, I don't know, go to um, Italy to shoot, then mm -hmm. me covering his airline airfares and his um, all the accommodation and all that, that's, that's, that, that costs too much money. Yeah. So it's yeah. definitely a cheaper option to do it. Uh, I think I think any of the destination weddings that I have I've done outside California and Vegas, I think I've always done it just by myself. It makes sense. So how about you, uh, Pauline? What do you think? Maybe I would think I would consider that. I, I mean, I'm part of a lot of Facebook groups, which is all international, so I'd probably look in there first. Definitely, would need to do a lot of vetting and make sure they're legit. Because <laughs> right, I'd, right. exactly. I'd be a little scared because you know it's not, I'm not home yeah. and anything could happen. They could rob me or whatever. That's true. Yep, <laughs> I think yep. of all worst scenarios first. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, at that point, I'd rather just shoot myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, lots of things to think about. But have you heard of like horror stories about some people? Or go to a destination and then they get stopped by border 
by immigration or border patrol, and they send them back to the U.S. or stuff like that. I haven't they, heard one personally, like, but I'm sure that happens. Yeah, I, I heard uh, Cuba. Cuba does that, or um, yeah, if they see like you have a camera gears and whatnot, they yeah. yeah, they'll send you back home. I mean, I I think I can understand it. I mean, like they're trying to protect their own, you know, their own economy, citizen. Yeah, but yeah. I think I think I can I can see the both sides of that story. Like if that clients are. Uh, Let's say in Canada, and if the clients are coming from the U.S. and then they're bring they're bringing U.S. photographer, then in yeah. in real like they're also creating creating the economy and also taking away, so it's like zero. Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah it's a it's a weird it's a weird yeah. thing, you know. But at the same yeah. time, I think it comes down to like it's. I think it comes down to like the permit thing as well, and about you know like creating, you know, um, yeah. shooting at a different venue. Like it's yeah. that's Canada has that sort of is offering that venue and is offering that backdrop and that that yeah. vibe. So I guess you have to also inform your clients, right? That not to make them nervous, but just to be transparent that. If they really like you, I guess it's also their choice, right? If they really chose you, then what can what can you what can the local guys do, right? But at the same time, I want I want to advise them to do anything illegal. <laughs> yeah, just I guess being transparent, like what the, what are the pros and cons mm. of like hiring you instead of the local guys? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then it goes back to like the thought of how many people are getting married. There's only so many days in the year that there are going to be couples, you know. So yeah, yeah, you are taking maybe a job from someone, but at the same time, there's always someone else getting married mm-hmm. or That's wanting true. a That's shoot. True. So yeah, but yeah. It, don't you think? But if if it's only that one, like if it's that just an exception, then they will allow it. But that could that could start it like a sort of like new trend kind of thing. Definitely. Because that's been yeah. happening here in Vegas. Mm. Like, cause the, Las Vegas is a destination, right? Yeah. And I can see other people um, from other states coming here, traveling here mm. to, to shoot their weddings. Even though you would say that the volume is really a lot here in Vegas. It is really is, is setting um, a precedent. Some of the local photographers here, new, yeah. or, new or established, would, would feel that hit. Like, they would... Yeah. I mean, it um, depends on the location, right? Because yeah. I feel like, like you said, Vegas is like a destination mm-hmm. location. I would say the same for like Mexico or yeah, Hawaii, yeah, right? Yeah, so definitely. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And those markets are also very saturated. Like, There's a lot mm-hmm. of really amazing photographers. Um, okay. So we um, um, get into the actual sort of like the planning side of things of destination weddings and um I guess I'll kind of go through some of the some of the things that I do, and then maybe you guys could add on to some of the things that I don't do. So me, I think planning the whole destination weddings, um, I use first Google, search for the venue, and search for that venue wedding, venue engagement session, venue events, all different kind of things, and then try to see. I'm also not, I'm trying to see what kind of photos that, that's been taken at that place, but also I'm trying to see what the venue actually looks like depending on that photographer took in different angles. Like if it's, mm-hmm. I want to try to get all different, all four directions of like north, south, west, east in terms of like to figure out like what kind of lights there are and what kind of like things there are. And, and then from there, I'll probably go into like a Google Maps or, um, Google Earth to see the sort of like the outside, like how the light is hitting at, at a time of time of the day, and then I use this app called Photo Pills, and then that kind of directs the depending on the date, it shows the angle of the sunlight hitting that venue, and then depending on that given date, I can see which way the light will be hitting at that certain time, so I can plan a little bit better in terms of like where we can do the like the first look or the couple portrait, all that kind of stuff. And then I'll go into something like Pinterest and see what kind of photos have been taken and if there's any kind of... I think through Pinterest, I tried to fly, find blogs that's uh, by a photographer who shot at that venue. Then oftentimes they have a ton of photos from that, from that venue that I can see all different angles mm-hmm. and not only about the the ceremony location, but also the reception area and the getting ready uh, location. There's always been, always been pretty good help. And because they're using, 
you know, it's, it's a similar sort of like style throughout. I can kind of see what, how much, how much light there is in that, in that getting ready room and in the recession room and all that kind of stuff. And then I think that's it in terms of actual <laughs> planning goes. From there, I'll probably create a short list and then probably create, you know, what to bring um, to the for that destination wedding. Um, how many light stands I need and how many how many lights I need, all that kind of stuff. So and, and that's pretty much it, I think. Sorry. So just to add on to the the venue um, research. Uh, most hotels nowadays would have a virtual um, virtual tours because of, I guess COVID. Most of them would have like the virtual virtual tours, so you could actually have uh, an idea, like take a tour of the hotel or the venue and see how the actual venue looks like. And then, yeah, what what Eugene said, uh, Google Earth and Google Maps. And yeah, to add on, like especially if the clients are also traveling to there, then they would for sure have photos of the venue because I would assume that when they're booking that they would have seen it in some sort of capacity. Mm -hmm. That they already Um, went there, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So anything that you guys do differently? I probably don't go as thorough as you. Because I feel like I, you know, I want to get a sense of what it looks like, even local ones, like the venue, the location. But typically, I feel like it's, you know, you can only plan so much. I'm kind of preparing myself always to expect the unexpected and to go with the flow. And because you never know, like all the photos you see is never going to be the same lighting, mm. might be different, things happen, construction, whatever, you know, so... Yeah, I don't I, go through it. I'm smiling because I feel like... Um, what? I, I'm, I'm like that too. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. more relaxed than... Yeah. And then I just try to figure out the day, like during the day or when I when I go there. Yeah. Like, I feel oh, like I, I have a major FOMO because like if I like, <laughs> if I stop doing uh doing the searching then I, I feel like i will be missing out some of the angles mm. that you know other photographers haven't done and like i want to get something like a special shot from that location and all that but like yeah i feel like i'll miss out on something like if i don't do it i mean i, I see shots i'm like oh i should do this but then i maybe i don't check beforehand or i don't save it so i don't remember mm. but then it still ends up working out so you know yeah. <laughs> it's fine <laughs> Yeah, it will always work out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like doing yeah. that too. Like, just um, um, I feel like yeah, the crea- the creativeness just comes out during the day, and then just looking for things. Like, I'm more aware of like my surroundings and looking John, at what I can do. Yeah, John, we 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 know. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, the one thing that I try to make sure of this is like, there's white walls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like especially yeah. reception wise, so that I have an idea. Like, oh, I can bounce. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. if not, if you don't have like off camera flash, then yeah. just direct flash it in. <laughs> yes, There's no right. other option. Yep. So what can you do? Worst you can only plan worst, for right? so much. Right? Unless you <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not the client's right. fault. The walls are not exactly. Right. <laughs> yep, yep. They chose the venue, so too bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think any of the clients would know, like, oh, I, I didn't know one of the walls needs to be white. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think even Taylor Jackson have done something creative, even found the smallest white patch. <laughs> yeah, like he, exactly. Yeah. He would find it and use it. So, you know, yeah. it's possible to find it. Maybe well, just there, a reflector. There's a technique <laughs> that I learned from uh, Jerry Gionis, um, and he literally uses his hand, his palm, oh as a, as a, as a, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to bounce to off. Yeah. But but you, because your your hands a little bit, it, the color will be a little bit warmer than the actual white wall. Yeah. But it will yeah. at least be consistent, so yeah, that you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. <laughs> but yeah, wow. well. I think um, that was a pretty pretty fun conversation about destination wedding in, in, as a whole. I don't know how how informative but that was, but um, like I said, it's not. It was weird. Our podcast is not supposed to be educational, so there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, one thing I want to add is obviously this is important no matter where you are, but especially on destination weddings, is making sure you back up your cards and making sure you keep them at least on you and at multiple areas. Yeah. in your bag different locations, so in case, yeah. you know someone steals your bag or whatever you still have it on you in case if you mm-hmm. haven't already backed up everything yeah and back yeah. it up um and cloud storage as well yeah yes. for that reason i i do miss using Narbox. like i i used to just back it up like whenever i could 
Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, there you go. I think that's a good place to wrap up. And I think um, for any any listeners who um, who are more interested in destination weddings and who need to ask more questions about destination weddings, I mean, I think it's always a location dependent. Um, you know, um, like every country is different, every city is different. Ask us. Um, we may be able to help. Uh, we may not be able to, but we, you know, like we, it's always nice to have a conversation. Next episode is our first, our very first um, Q and A day with the um, with our listeners. It's not going to be live. Um, it's going to be recorded. We um, we've been getting a few questions. If you are still, you know, wanting to ask more questions on it. Uh, please do on our um, Instagram post and uh, Facebook comments. Is it the other way around? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're super um, excited about the about the episode and um, looking forward to answering as many questions as possible. If there's only, I don't know, I, I think we passed three, so I think we're, that's a success. Um, but um, that's what we have for next week. But for now. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>